Hi, it's Doug Keating. Welcome to my seventh practice video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the plan we used for our summer 2017 vacation. As I explained in the last video, this trip would be different. It was our first joint vacation, the Keatings and the Singers. We would have all the kids with us. In the last video, I described the process we used for selecting where we would go in France and the sites we would see. In this video, I'll go into greater detail about the plan itself with a focus on the places we would stay. Sometimes where you stay factors greatly into whether or not you have an awesome trip. Here's a summary of the agenda we plan to follow. We would be spending 11 days in the middle of June. Our goal, as always, was to have a lot of fun and experience French culture for all that it's worth. Let's face it, French culture is pretty unique. The sites we would see would focus on Paris, Ile-de-France, the region around Paris, Normandy, and a little bit of Brittany. The main cities we planned to see included Paris, Giverny, Rouen, Honfleur, Cannes, Bayou, saint Mirigliese, mont Mont-Saint-Michel, Dinan, Rennes, Le Mans, Chartres, and Reims. I'm pretty sure I did not pronounce a whole bunch of those places correctly. We would stay multiple nights in Paris to get over jet lag, and then we would bounce around a bit, staying one night at the other locations. The reason for this approach is that I wanted to make sure we were on Mont St. Michel for Jill's birthday. I thought it would make a great birthday present. Our flight plan this year was pretty simple. We would fly direct from Dallas to Charles de Gaulle Airport, right outside of Paris, using Air France. Last year we flew Lufthansa, a German airline. I thought we'd try Air France to see if French airlines are any better. They're not. The other thing worth noting is that we would fly later in the day and arrive later in Paris. The last two trips we arrived in Europe at the crack of dawn, which can be a challenge. Sure, you get a full day of sightseeing. The unpleasant part is you're already tired and have to stay up as long as you can the first day, which can be a pretty miserable experience for the start of your vacation. Here's a summary of the schedule we plan to follow for our trip to Paris in the north. If you watched the last video, you may notice that we would stay longer than the original plan of eight days. Two compelling reasons for this. First, there's a lot to see, so we figured why rush? Let's spend more time there. Second, we would save money on plane tickets by not flying on the weekends. It was actually cheaper to fly direct on a weekday. You can see here we would start in Paris, then Ile de France to see Versailles, then head north through Normandy to see several towns to include the D-Day beaches. Next, drive west to Mont Saint-Michel, loop back towards Paris via Le Mans and Chartres, and finish in Rhymes. The other thing you may notice is we're flying back on a Monday. I did some analysis about plane ticket prices. It was actually cheaper to stay an extra day and fly back on Monday than it would have been to fly back on Sunday. I know, sounds crazy. Stay longer to save money, but it's the truth. Here's what the route looks like on the map, starting in Paris and then traveling in a counterclockwise direction north towards the coast, visiting the D-Day beaches, then west over to Mont-Saint-Michel, hitting Rennes, and then looping back to Paris. We would be renting a car to cover all this distance. At first, it may look like a lot of driving, but the distances are not too bad. For example, from Paris to Giverny is about 90 minutes, from Giverny to Rouen, about an hour, and then Rouen to Anfleur, about another hour. On the next few slides, I'll describe the hotels we plan to stay in, quick travel tip. I use Booking.com for all my reservations. The main reason I like using Booking.com is that it's really convenient. I have all my reservations in one location, and their app for your phone is actually pretty easy to use, especially if you have to make changes to your reservations while traveling. By the way, I've had to make changes on every summer trip to Europe. Here you see the first two hotels we would stay in, Paris and Enfleur. Both are three-star hotels, and I get a nice discount for the one in Paris. The next two hotels? Actually, the one in Bayou is a guest house, not a hotel. We would stay in a three-star in Mont-Saint-Michel. I have to warn anybody that's going to Mont-Saint-Michel, it is not cheap to stay on the island itself. If you want to save money, then stay on the mainland. I consider Mont-Saint-Michel to be a bucket list item and worth the extra expense. And the other three places we would stay, Magic Hall, a boutique hotel in Rennes, which looked pretty funky, La Parvis in Chartres, and an apartment in Rhymes. I deliberately picked a really cheap place to stay in Rhymes, 
since I didn't think Jill and her kids would be with us for this part of the trip. In this section, I'll go into greater detail about each hotel to include some photos to give you a feel for the kind of places we would be staying. Quite a diverse array of accommodations. First in Paris, Hotel du Cadran. It's located in the Rue de Claire neighborhood, a great area to stay for anyone going to Paris. This hotel looks super modern. It's even described by Rick Steves in his book as a really modern boutique hotel, not a chain hotel. You see a few photos. I figured, we're in Paris, let's get modern, let's get fashionable, let's have fun in Paris and stay in Hotel du Cadran. Next hotel in the port city of Honfleur is the best western La Chevelle Blanc. One reason to stay at this hotel, and that is location, location, location. Look at the picture on the top. It is right on the water. I figured no better way to experience a port town than to stay right on the water near the old harbor. The other thing to note is that we would only rent two rooms here. The ladies would have a double, and then the guys would all go into a small apartment. We don't need any fancy schmancy accommodations. All we need is a bed to sleep in, so four of us would pile into the small apartment. Good times. In Bayou, I decided we would not stay in a hotel. Rather, we would stay in a guest house, which is kind of like a bed and breakfast for anybody that's been to one of those in Europe. In this case, La Castel guest house. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, it has a little bit of a Harry Potter feel to it, but it looked like a nice place to stay. Two reasons I enjoy the bed and breakfast experience. First, you get to meet locals as well as other guests. Second, they're usually located right outside of town. For this one, look at the view on the left side. You can see how close we were to the cathedral. I figured easy to get in and out of, especially to visit the D-Day beaches while we were there. For our bucket list experience on Mont Saint-Michel, we would stay at La Mer Poulard, which is a famous hotel located on the island. I have to be honest here and let you know there are not a lot of hotels to pick from. They have a monopoly business, and as you might imagine, this place is definitely expensive. These photos give you a little bit of a feel of what it looks like inside. Hey, did I say it's expensive? Because it's definitely expensive to stay on Mont Saint Michel, but it's worth it. Mont Saint Michel is a bucket list destination, and we would be there on Jill's birthday. Sounds like two good reasons to splurge for a once in a lifetime experience. Speaking of once in a lifetime experience, if you look in the lower right hand corner, you'll see an omelet. This place is famous for serving big omelets, like big as your head omelets. Apparently, when pilgrims would arrive to the island after trekking across France, this was their meal of choice. I think it was the preferred meal because, let's face it, it's not too difficult to find some eggs, cook them in an omelet, and then serve them to the hungry pilgrims. Next stop would be La Magic Hall in Rennes. One reason I chose this place, well, actually two reasons. First, it looked funky online when viewing the pictures. It has a really modern European look. It includes a big room where people can gather and share stories over breakfast. Second, the price. Couldn't beat the price. Compared to Mont Saint Michel, probably about a third of the cost. I figured I'd never been to this area, have no idea what this place is like, so maybe there's just a little bit of magic in La Magic Hall. Next stop, La Parvie in Chartres. A few compelling reasons to stay here. First, killer location. It's right next to the cathedral, which is the main attraction in Chartres. Second, each room was different. You see the two pictures on the right. These are two different rooms that look old and funky because the building is, well, old and funky. I figured each of us would kind of get a unique experience while staying here. A third reason is it's a bed and breakfast. Another great opportunity to meet some locals as well as other guests while staying here. One chart about rhymes since this was added to the agenda for anybody that watched the last video. The reason I added was to save money on plane tickets, as I've mentioned previously in this video. Here's a quick summary of what Rhymes is all about. In the upper left-hand corner, you see a map of the old medieval city, complete with wall. It is known for two things. On the right is the cathedral. This is where most French kings have been crowned throughout the history of the country. Not Paris, but here. In the lower left corner, it's also known for alcohol. 
More specifically, Champagne. This region is where Champagne was invented, perfected, and distributed around the world. If you are a fan of Champagne, it is probably a good place to visit. For rhymes, we would be staying in a small apartment. Nothing fancy, as you can see in the pictures. I decided we could save some money. It would be, it would be just the boys and I, so only rudimentary accommodations. Beds were all we would need. I finished explaining to the kids what to expect. Yes, I know. I'm a nerd. I do actually use these charts to brief the children about the vacation. In this case, we would see a lot of world-class sites to include museums, churches, and beaches. The opportunity to eat some fabulous French food, as well as experience world history. Maybe even meet some regular French people, and perhaps even learn a little bit of the language. But overall, most importantly, have an awesome time. I'm showing Rick Steve's book here because I use his resources a lot when planning vacations. I highly recommend just about everything he does, whether it's Rick's books, his websites, his podcasts, his videos, whatever, they all are useful. This finishes the seventh practice video. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm interested in your feedback. Feel free to scroll down and leave a comment. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.